Hey everyone, just wanted to make a quick video talking about this new indie game called Gunbrella made by Doinksoft, which is a Devolver Digital Studio. And let me tell you, I was very excited for this game as A, it looked like a good Metroidvania platforming game with a good amount of action with a unique twist with your gun being an umbrella. And B, it was made by Devolver Digital. Published by Devolver Digital, developed by Doinksoft, who's owned by Devolver Digital. But either way, I was excited for this game because it looked fantastic. And really going into the game, it seems like a pretty short game. I'm pretty sure I read on Twitter it was about six to eight hours long. So it's not too long for the price tag of 15 US dollars or so. And I can say I've played the game for about six hours or so and I'm not done yet. I feel like I'm very close to the end, but overall the game feels good and definitely worth the price. So the story of this game, you play as Murray and Murray is trying to find the murderer of his wife and his wife was murdered with the weapon that you use the entire game, which is the Gunbrella. The story is good overall, but you travel from train station to train station. It seems the game has about five stops total, which may not seem like a lot, but trust me, these stops are packed with a lot of side quests that you can do, which I will say are kind of easy to miss. But a lot of people to talk to as well, and maybe even some upgrades for your Gunbrella. I'll say, I thought this game was kind of advertised as an action roguelite. I swear one of the tags was action roguelite when I first looked at it, which did pique my interest a little bit more. But after playing the game for about six hours, I will say it's more just a traditional Metroidvania with platforming and some pretty cool movement with the Gunbrella. The Gunbrella has a lot of cool little movements that you can do. It can block bullets, it can shoot bullets, and you can obviously basically just float with it, like Mary Poppins. But I'll say the game's not really a roguelite. It's just more so a fun Metroidvania with some good platforming and some pretty good combat and movement. I'll say the controls at first when you play this game, the controls feel a little off as you can do some precise shooting with the right stick if you're using a controller, which I would suggest. But it, you have to like hit the right stick, you move around with the left stick, jump with A, RT or X to shoot, mostly just RT. The controls feel a little weird at first, but it's not too bad. But like I'm saying, this game's not really a roguelite in my opinion. You have some gun upgrades like reload speed and damage that you can get with scraps that you pick up throughout the game. There's one shop that will upgrade your Gumbrella. I've only been able to upgrade it once so far, but I am trying to find a way to upgrade it again. And you could also get more health I've learned. And the health you get from doing side quests, it seems, is I've done a couple side quests that took a little bit longer in the game. And that gave me an extra health upgrade. It's kind of like Legend of Zelda. It's like collect two of these little half heart pieces and your health goes up, which I thought is kind of cool. A few little upgrades here and there scattered across this story. Now, I don't want to spoil the story because at one point I thought the game was about to end and I was thinking, wow, that was much shorter than six to eight hours. But you do go back through all the towns at one point and the game changes up a lot the second time through. I'm not going to say how it changes up too much, but there's also these other enemies in the game called wraiths or rats that you have to find and you can't really kill them in the first half of the game. The second half, it gives you more upgrades and there's also different types of ammo that you can have. Obviously, one that can kill rates, you get that later on in the game. Your main ammo that has unlimited ammo, you have grenades, you have rifle ammo that has longer range. Really, there's a lot of good variety there, but overall, the variety doesn't really seem too necessary as I've kind of just only used the main gun 90% of the time, 95% of the time, and kind of just ignore everything else. Besides ammo variety, there's also a good amount of variety in health items that can heal you and even give you some soul hearts that will just disappear if you get hit. But overall, the combat isn't too bad. I mean, when it's not like hard, the game was advertised as a hard game. And I will say it, it can be kind of hard. Some of the enemies at first, I was so bad at trying to block with the enemies and it could be a little frustrating at first. But over time, once you get used to the controls, the combat's not really too hard. And the bosses, I like the design of the bosses. I think they're pretty cool. But the bosses as a whole are very easy in my opinion and i'm playing on the hardest difficulty the game has three difficulties total with easy normal and hard and i decided to play on hard and the bosses aren't anything too crazy but they are fun to fight and they do have little tricks on how to kill them but it's kind of it's pretty simple stuff as a whole and like i said this is a metroidvania game but i will say it is missing one big thing that most metroidvanias do tend to have and that's a map this game doesn't really have a map as it's kind of a linear path on where you're going every single time. Each station has a few little extra areas that you can go to, but once you fully explore them, there isn't really much to do. There's some task and quest where you can go back and talk to an NPC to get the quest done, but once you fully finish an area, there's not really many upgrades for you to get. 
So it, I'm going to say it's not really like a super traditional Metroidvania, but there's some Metroidvania aspect. The best way I could describe this game is a fun half twin stick shooting platformer game that has a unique weapon with a gun. Overall, though, this game is really good, and I think it's 100% worth the $15 pickup. Doinksoft did a great job with this game. I remember first seeing it in a Nintendo Indie Direct like a year ago, and I thought that game looks pretty great. I'm going to keep my eye on it. And here it is now, about a year later, I'd say. Honestly, it's a good time. And big shout out to Devolver Digital for giving me a code to the game. Overall, it's a good game. Fun combat can be a little hard at first. The controls are a little wonky, but the bosses are pretty fun to fight. The areas are well designed. The graphics are beautiful. For, you know, an eight hour game, it's not too bad. If you're a completionist, you might have to go back and do it again, as some achievements are locked behind, like, picking a selection. And if you pick, if you pick wrong for that achievement, you have to just go back and play through the whole game again as you only get that chance once. But overall, I'd say it's a good game and definitely worth the pickup. So yeah, go check it out if you haven't. I appreciate you watching this quick little uh, Gunbrella review, I guess. And I'd probably give this game, so far, my first impression, six hours in, kind of almost done. I'd give it like an 8 out of 10. Maybe an 8.5, I'm feeling lucky. We'll see how I feel after I fully finish. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.